Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell and welcome to Best of Publishers. Today we're taking a look at Plaid Hat Games. Now Plaid Hat Games is uh, basically one of those success stories you like to see where basically there was just a gamer, Colby Doc, who decided to make games that he liked. I mean, first he started a website called Heroescapers.com because he really loved Heroescape to the point where they let him even do some of the developing for later things from Heroescape. And eventually he made a card game, Summoner Wars, that was kind of like a, a card game version of Heroescape. And that did well enough, uh, critically wise at least, to let him make other games. And as time went by, he went off on his own, started his own company, got other employees. They were eventually bought by... Philosophia, or F2Z Entertainment, uh, which had also owned Z-Man Games, which then, of course, was bought by Asmodee. So, Plat Hat Games is now a branch of Asmodee. And they're a much more renowned company now. Lots of great games that they've made. Now, they just, I just have enough to make a top 10. And number 10 is not really one of my favorite games, but I thought I would mention it because it's so well-known and was such a huge, was probably the most anticipated game of last year, and that's Seafall. Seafall, a uh, leg legacy game, which unlike other legacy games like Risk Legacy and Pandemic Legacy, was built from the ground up, which is a very difficult thing to do, and you can see the problems with that in Seafall. There is a lot of people who do like it. I would wager that the people who don't like it outweigh the ones who do, but the ones who do have a lot of fun with it, and there's a lot of great ideas and a lot of cool concepts in the game, and they did a fantastic production of it. So that's my number 10. Number nine. It's Video Game High School. Now, Video Game High School is actually based on a web series, which I had never heard of, really, but I went and watched because I played this game, and it's an okay thing. It's a, I guess I'm a, little, I'm a little older than the demographic who would like the Video Game High School, but the game itself is very simple, very easy, as you're basically trying to manipulate it to have your people get the highest scores in different video games, and it was actually a pretty good game. I, was, I really liked it. So, Video Game High School, number nine. Number eight, Bioshock Infinite. Now, I've never played Bioshock. I do know that it's a very, very popular video game series, and I was astounded that Plat Hat was able to land such a big license. Now, the game never did that well, but I thought it was a good game, kind of a team game with a lot of plastic miniatures, and it wasn't like a fighting game. It was kind of like this back and forth trying to accomplish missions. It was a very unique, intriguing game, which is probably why it didn't do so well, because I think a lot of people came into it expecting one thing and finding another thing, but it was a good game. Number seven is Ashes for me. Now, Ashes is probably a lot of people's favorite game. It's a very good game, uh, player versus player, where you roll dice, and those dice are kind of your pool to do different things with cards. You have a deck of cards, uh, and you have, you're summoning different creatures to fight each other. I like Ashes a lot. I just don't know that it, it holds its own, for me, as strongly because there's a lot of other games in the genre, Magic the Gathering and things like that. However... It really is well done. The quality, the art is amazing. And the game is obviously doing well enough that a lot of people are still playing and enjoying it, especially on a tournament level. Ashes. Number six is Dungeon Run. This was the first game, I believe, that was made after Summoner Wars, which was kind of a game in which you were running through fighting monsters with a really cool combat system. And eventually one player would find a summoning stone and then they would get out and everyone else would be trying to stop them. So it's a game that everyone was working together at first and then turned into a one verse all which some people didn't like, and honestly, some people should not ever play this game. But I really did like it. I especially like the combat system with the dice and how you match numbers up. I really like that. I like the pieces. I like the theming of the game. It was a lot of fun for me. The ending was a little wonky, but it still overall worked, and that was Dungeon Run. Number five is Mice and Mystics, one of their most popular games by a mile. Mice and Mystics takes basically the theme of uh, Watership Down or Red Wall and brings it to a board game where at the very beginning some people are transformed into mice and then it kind of totally throws that out and you're just mice for the rest of the game and the expansions and you're fighting cockroaches and, and rats and all sorts of things in a cooperative, very strongly story-themed game. Beautiful miniatures. The whole thing is like the one of the best cooperative experiences that any kid is ever going to have. Uh, great family game, Mice and Mystics. Number four is City of Remnants. I really like City of Remnants. I don't know why I feel like I'm the only one. City of Remnants is a game which you're a gang in this city where aliens are coming in and they're like controlling the city, but you're trying to do things under the radar. So there's a bit of deck building. There's a little bit of area control. There's a little bit of a lot of things in this game that's, again, 
asymmetrical and that to me it just came together to make a very very fun experience city of remnants number three dead of winter i said my Mystics was one of their most popular games i would guess dead of winter has surpassed that or the sequel to dead of winter and they have another expansion coming out this year but dead of winter is walking dead the board game and too bad they didn't get that license because they did it a lot better than all the people who did have the license uh, Walking Dead, uh, I mean, I'm calling it that now, uh, Dead of Winter is a game which controls survivors and everyone has a goal, there's a possibility someone's a traitor, but everyone also has goals that make them look like traitors. And then the crossroad systems, which is one of the coolest things ever in a board game and I cannot wait to see it used in another game where something might happen on your turn but might not depending on the actions that you take. Really good game, slightly long but a lot of fun, if you, especially if you like traitor games, Dead of Winter. Number two is Spectre Ops. Spectre Ops takes uh, Scotland Yard and puts it on a much, much higher level. Uh, this is a person, it's, uh, think of uh, Snake uh, from the Solid Snake games where he's coming in. Basically, it's a guy sneaking into an enemy base and trying to get to different objectives, blowing them up or whatever he's doing. And everyone else is a team trying to stop him. He's writing down where he moves. They're using special abilities and trying to move around, trying to figure out exactly where he is a really fantastic game, Spectre Ops. And my number one favorite game from Plat Hat Games is the first game they made, Summoner Wars. And until last year, they were still making expansions for it. It is now finished, and that's fine. It is a complete, wonderful game in which each player has a deck of cards, and that deck of cards is your, your creatures that you're summoning on the board to fight each other, but it's also gonna be spells, and you also use this to pay. You'll never get all your cards out, you're only going to get some of them out. You will have a finite number of cards. The game will end. There's also dice chucking, but also some really good strategy and great balanced asymmetrical factions. Each faction feels completely different. Easy deck building when they added reinforcements. It was easy to, to just put, throw together a thing. You didn't sit there and think for a long time. Can be played on a tournament level possibly, but I really like it on a casual basis. One of my favorite games of all times. Fantastic. My favorite game from Plat Hat Games, Summoner Wars. What are yours? There's not actually a whole lot of games that they made that I haven't mentioned, but let me know what your favorite games are in the comments below. This is a company that I'm very intrigued to see what they're going to be doing in the future. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell, and you've been watching Best of Plat Hat Games. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.